Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calderness. This episode, we're going to answer a ton of listener questions we weren't able to get to last week, as well as we'll be bringing back Thread Dead Redemption and taking a look at the the wacky business that's been going on on the WizKids Twitter these past uh, few weeks. <laughs> this is episode 375. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six yeah. people think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools. It's not Witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey, Google, back some more. Let the chat continue because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is the Dial H for Hero Clicks champion. The billion clicks Bruce himself, Simeon. What's going on? Yeah, you know how you know how normal people feel pain, Calder. I'm oh, not I'm, like okay. normal. Pe- do you know what a self tapper is? A self tapping screw. I don't. I oh. do not. Okay. Well, imagine you've got a drill, right? You can drill a yeah. hole. Yes. And then you've got screws that can like screw into holes, uh, softer material. A self tapper just has a like a drill bit on the tip so that you can cut through metal and also screw with the same. Oh, screw. okay. Sorry. Yeah. Then yes. Yeah. I have. Never mind. Yep. Maybe most people don't call them self tappers, but that's what I've always called sure. them. Okay. I'm with you now, though. I got you. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I accidentally put one of those into my kneecap. <laughs> Oh, this this week. Oh, uh, so just like with a normal drill, how you don't put like your hand under the piece that you're oh. drilling, or you don't put like your like you don't drill towards your body. Well, I didn't really have yes. a choice. I had to drill towards my body because I'm to. on the deck of like a billboard, right? Of course, where else would okay. I be? Right. And I'm I'm putting the, like the the little sign that like lets people know absolutely no information about like the sign internal company thing that we have to do legally we have to number our sign uh so i'm sure, putting one of those sure. little placards on and i can't get like a good uh, i can't get any like good leverage because i'm like trying to put this self tapper through uh about a quarter inch of steel and mm-hmm. i'm sitting there and it's like going and going and like i like readjust and then i'm going i'm going and then all of a sudden like immense amounts of pain and i like jump back as quick as i can and I realized there's like a big old hole in my jean and like blood starts like running down my pants. <laughs> and I'm like, I look and there's like a perfectly little carved circle. And I was like, oh, ah, great. Oh, Good job, me. Uh, Gosh, dude. What is, ah, oh, how deep was it? Uh, it was about a quarter inch. It was like, it was a good chunk of, oh, I mean, it was like just, all the skin. I circle hope none of the bone. Gone. And that's like that's my Gotta epitaph stop. on my you heard me. my you heard me right now. I can't. All the skin, hopefully <laughs> none the of the skin, bone. Hopefully no bone. <laughs> uh, uh, but it was going at like a good rate because uh, you know I'm I'm trying to get through this like quarter inch steel and I'm just like and I'm like holding it as hard as I can. Uh, Knees like tightly pressed up against it. Yeah, it was it's bad news bears. Well, I'm glad you are uh, relatively with us today and not. Uh, could have been worse. Could have been worse, especially knowing you. It could have been worse. Well, I'm glad <laughs> <laughs> that we're here. God, so painful sounding, man. Well, goodness gracious. Uh, on that note, was there anything that made you happy this week? We'll go with we'll go with that from the turning oh, yes, yourself because into a, a board. As the listeners own... might know, this is indeed not a uh, pain inducing podcast. This is a HeroClix podcast. Uh, Correct. So, so it made me happy this last week. Um, it was actually it was actually a couple of things. Uh, I was happy when Professor Pena. Um, you might have heard on the last episode we snuck it in at the very end while I was editing, uh, because the day after Professor Pena did announce that Rise and Fall is coming out, which means that I I don't necessarily care for Rise and Fall. I'm not gonna be like the biggest fan of that, but I am glad that it's coming out for the people that have been waiting for it. And then on top of that, it means that we might be getting to a normal schedule for the afterwards, which is good all around because I do like Empire yeah. and I like the look of at least as far as what we've seen. Um, so that was really nice. 
And then on top of that, um, I've just been having a, a pretty decent week. Um, lots of like nice little like things, you know, just decent weather. Uh, my dog's been happy enough, at least currently. He's no longer growling, so there's that. <laughs> Good. That's, but, that's yeah. nice. <laughs> just, just a lot of like little kind of nicety things. Yeah. Um, had some good pizza. Uh, I think it's called Cops. It says home of the cream cheese pizza, which I don't know if that's true. I feel like that's probably been done other places, but it is good I pizza. Have, I so, assume. Yeah. Okay. Nice, man. That's pretty sweet. Uh, what made me happy this week, uh, doing a lot of ranch work, moving cows, working cows. That was pretty good just to, to get it pounded out get it done but uh, i was really happy saw suicide squad with my family i would have went to a theater but we were just looking on thursday this week like ah suicide squad comes out tomorrow we were still like thinking that it was going to be only friday didn't know it was going to come out on hbo the day before um so we're like let's watch the only dc movie we haven't seen yet which is the harley quinn movie birds of prey before we watch suicide squad just in case that has anything to do with it dc of course None of their movies like matter. Like they, not even the first Suicide Squad does it matter if you even watch it really to see the second one. You mean um, just Suicide Squad? You know it doesn't matter when they named the sequel the and then say yeah. It was like a Toy Story two was called the Toy Story. It really is just the Suicide. I didn't even notice that. I honestly still so thought it was Suicide strange. Squad too, but it is like, Suicide they don't Squad. Want you to remember the first one or then something? The oh, Suicide Squad 2021. <laughs> yikes, man! Yikes. Um, but yeah, so we went to it. and It was like, oh, it just said big, huge letters there. It was like, oh, you just watch Suicide Squad. Well, well, then yeah, we'll just watch Suicide Squad. So we did, and I super enjoyed it. Um, like, dude, Peacemaker is is so my jam as a character. I really heavily enjoyed john cena as peacemaker um it made me sad we don't have a blood sport peacemaker polka dot man uh whatever hero clicks figures that was like i was like ah, dang man they did some deep cuts uh for just for suicide squad and it made me bummed i will say uh it was a really fun movie i think if you just enjoy comic book movies and just want to have a good time then it's awesome and even then it's still a really good movie it's got a good enough story i still you know, I'm not attached to any characters in the Suicide Squad, like comics at all. So, like, I didn't care what they did with their characters or who died or, like, whatever. That didn't like, affect my enjoyment of the movie. Um, except for some characters that I did like prior to going into it. Maybe I was a little bummed seeing them not get either as much screen time or not doing, like, cool enough stuff, I guess. You know, like, so, like some of that stuff was a bummer. But besides that, I really enjoyed, super enjoyed the movie. Sylvester Stallone as King Shark is hilarious. People online are like, yeah, dude, King Shark was awesome. And I'm like, yeah, he was all right, I guess. Like, I don't know if he was, like, the standout part of it, but he was hilarious. Like, Sylvester Stallone, like, if you go in not knowing that's Sylvester Stallone, you probably won't realize that. But if you know it's Sylvester Stallone as King Shark, you're like, oh, I hear it. You totally hear it. He's not changing his voice much to do King Shark. Like I can tell. I know that that broke whatever that thing that the way he talks. His his thing is great. There's probably like the funniest line in any DC movie ever in the first like five minutes between Javelin and Harley Quinn, which is just hilarious. Um, so yeah, great movie. Heavily enjoyed it as a non DC fan. Uh, really liked it. So for all those listeners out there, I think I like hate DC. Um, hey, I enjoyed this movie. So yeah. I Anyways. preemptively bought Multiversity and whatever the spinoff, the one-shot spinoff that heavily involves Peacemaker in it. I preemptively bought those before seeing because, one, the art is just really fantastic in those comics. But, two, yeah. I actually, yeah, Peacemaker seemed like a pretty interesting character that I have seen where I kind of want to, like, understand. He kind of reminds me of, like, Nuke, but... Oh, yeah. Less... Yes. I don't know, not less crazy, but like, I don't know, like if Nuke was like chaotic, evil, Peacemaker's like lawful. He has like a code, but he's just like kind of kind of a dumb code. But I don't really know because I, I haven't seen the movie and I haven't read the character, uh, but I'm going to do both. Yeah, that is cool. Okay, nice. And then real quick, I want to shout out because this week I was able to uh, got, get in a lot of practice games with, uh, with Patreon member Matt Reed. Uh, so... He wanted to like practice a few Weapon H teams. There's a big tournament in Tulsa, Oklahoma today, actually, as a uh, recording this on August 7th. Uh, we don't know who's won yet. Maybe we'll know. Who knows? Uh, but we just played a bunch of practice games, and that was real good. Like, sadly, it was on Roll20. Roll it is what it is, but still just playing a bunch of practice games, getting those in. Fairly enjoyable. He was playing Weapon H, Venom, Doctor Strange, Sky Tyrant at 50, 
Uh, Moloid Moloid, Triple Wendigo, Proteus Proteus, the two different versions, and then Commissioner and the Power Gem. Big old, big old monster theme team. Pretty, pretty gnarly. Pretty gnarly. So that's pretty cool. So, anyways, that is that's what made me happy this week. And we're gonna go ahead and jump into a Thread Dead Redemption. Friend, I just wanted to play. Now, firstly, we ain't friends. Don't make no mistake on that subject. Now, secondly, he can't hardly see, let alone reason. Now, reasoning ain't never been one of my strong points neither, but see, and I do just fine. Ooh, it's been a while since we've done one of these, Simeon, and boy, I just get chills listening to that little opening yeah, bit, of, that bit of that clip. It's such a good bumper. Uh, it, yeah. so good, good bumper. Uh, not quite as right. good as a generic gallery, little Scott Port. Not quite, yeah, that is, that's a really good one. Um, it, uh, we're on Tinker Twitter today. No, those aren't it. <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> we're on Twitter today. This is our first time doing a Threaded Redemption on Twitter. We are on WizKids' main twitter and we're looking at a few different posts slash threads so uh simi why don't you why don't you take yeah. us away we so you guys are going to get the gist of it once we get rolling <laughs> a here. lot of these so this isn't necessarily a whiz kids thread but it is a thread because of um and not all of these are hero clicks related so i'm not going to read all of the all of like the whiz kids what the like the image because they mostly have images i'm just going to read the little whiz kids blurb reply we'll only read Let's just read like one reply for you. Uh, yeah. So the first one is WizKid says, check out this at games radar exclusive about our upcoming prismatic paints and sprue based miniature. And they've got a link that you can, and then they've got all their hashtag, hashtag miniatures, hashtag sprue, hashtag mini painting, hashtag tabletop, hashtag RPG. Uh, so if you haven't heard, WizKids is coming out with a sprue based miniature line, which is a, a min it's something they've never done as far as I know. It's like one of those miniatures where you will have to cut them out of square and put them together. Uh, this is uh, like the Star Wars he's come, uh, the Warhammer, he's a lot of different stuff. And they've also got prismatic paints that are interested in. Um, let's see, we'll do one reply. Uh, we'll go with, well, I guess it's the top one. We'll go with Mutant Headcrab here says, LOL. No wonder you're quietly setting hero clicks up to fail. That, huh. that doesn't really seem like it's to do with these uh, sprue based miniatures right, yeah, at all. It seems, right. seems it's kind interesting. Of out of field there, but uh, yeah. but yeah, that's that's uh, post number one. Do you want to do you want to tackle the next one, Calder? The, the big post restock? number two. Just just going right up here. We had a big restock. Wizkid says of DC Comics Wonder Woman 80th Anniversary Booster Bricks. They just hit the online store. You still got time to pick yours up and send in your UPCs before the buy by the case ends on August 6th. What are you waiting for? And they have a little link uh, to their shop. Uh, just gonna go ahead uh, check out the first comment here. Uh, Mutant Headcrab says a Lamau restock in quotes. That's a funny thing to call unsold product that nobody wants. <laughs> Uh, I love the other comment saying hashtag oh, yes. unaccountable hashtag irresponsible hashtag shame shame <laughs> <laughs> hashtag shame. Uh, all right, we'll we'll jump to the next one. Uh, WizKids. Uh, so as you know, WizKids actually does sell other products other than HeroClix. So they've got they've got board games. Um, they've got. Uh, D and D miniatures. They've got a bunch of different like stuff going on, uh, and so this one is a lighthearted game of undeath awaits you in Zombie Princess, the Enchanted Maze. Pre-order at your friendly local game store or online today. <laughs> hashtag Zombie Princess. Hashtag Tabletop. Hashtag Board Game. Do uh, one comment. Uh, Mutant Head Crab here says, "What is at the end of the maze at Wizkid Games?" Question mark. Is it the past rules for hero clicks we were <laughs> promised years ago? <laughs> Ah <laughs> uh, yes, nothing I like more than than talking about a new board game that's going to come out soon and yeah. getting one response, a singular response asking about Hero Clips. Uh, you know, speaking of new board games coming out soon and then a singular response about Hero Clips, that brings us to our next post actually. Hold on to your boats. It's time to move like Grease Lightning. Pre-order your friendly local game store or online today. And then it's that hashtag WizKids, hashtag board games, hashtag tabletop, hashtag Grease Lightning. Uh, of course, one comment uh, by Mr. Headcrab here is, I wish your Heroclix products would ship like Grease Lightning. It's <laughs> <laughs> actually kind of clever. That's pretty good. It's a little good, actually. I'll give it to him there. This game does actually look interesting. It's got like a uh, Hydra. So Grease. Yeah, I don't really get in, what's um, totally going. Yeah, it's not Greased Lightning. Right. Like, it's it's Grease as in like, like the, the country. The country. And 
Yeah. And it's got like some old Spartan and I'm guessing maybe like Athens, some other yeah. old, old time Greek boats. Uh, yeah. Long a little, a, little uh, a racing flag, I guess. This is this some kind of race against swallowed by the Hydra? Some kind of boat race? Yeah, it actually it was, like, does a look like, a like NASCAR racing game. flag. Seems like, like a fast yeah. paced kind of. Yeah. Um, let's see the next one by WizKids. Uh, they posted an image of good old. This is Blackheart. Blackheart, Blackheart the new, from the yeah. new House of X set. Uh, so they posted an image of Blackheart with the question. Are there any Heroclix figures that make you nostalgic for video games? Uh, and to that, I say yes. Uh, well, well, good old Dial H did respond and we say, did. Uh, I, crossbones, I can... crossbones from what is that? Invincible Iron Man. Invincible Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah. Always reminded me of the heavy Team Fortress Two, which is actually got... yeah pretty right? accurate. Right. Yeah. Um, dude, that's the last comic version of Crossbones we've gotten ever. Oh, is from is Invincible really? Iron Man. Yeah. Dang. The rest have all been movies. It's crazy to me. Yeah, but more important than this, we've got a, a comment from Mutant Headcrab saying, "Yeah, that second wave of Street Fighter hero clicks that was never released. Not releasing things seems to be a historical trend." Dude, what? <laughs> what an accusation! Is it a uh, is it a historical trend? Because like, <laughs> as far as I know, it's Toon Clicks and Street Fighter Wave Two. Which I don't know if that was a, I don't know I wasn't playing back then I don't know if that was given an actual date or what but as far as I know I know for sure Toon Clicks was never more than just like a pre-production like idea kind yeah. of thing yeah but historical trend wise I don't <laughs> other than 2020 just kind of nixing a ton of like convention yeah. I don't think it's a trend like a trend needs yeah. to be more than well, this so, one off yeah. freak year thing yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna lie. What game is this Blackheart dude from? Because I this is the first time I'd ever heard. That's of what him. I was. So clearly, he's yeah. in some video game that makes people nostalgic, it's like some arcade game or whatever. Yeah, I, um, I, I know. Maybe Marvel versus Capcom because there was a couple things that were like he definitely, that, but I don't definitely remember that at all. Marvel versus Capcom three. But that's the only one I played. I know like two is a huge, huge hit. Um, for like Xbox 360 and PS3 when they re-released it for there it got a huge boost and it was obviously popular but yeah, yeah. honestly besides and I kind of had to like stretch on my crossbones answer I couldn't think of any hero folks that made nostalgic for video games like um like the, ultimate um, alliance kind of makes me nostalgic for like doom but we've gotten a ton of do- it's hard to be like oh, I sure. wish we had more dooms but to be fair that was like a very spells like the silver for surf it's oh, all cosmic okay. yeah I didn't I didn't play a lot of like the games I'm nostalgic for aren't necessarily like Marvel or DC games, you know, like which is like the main Wiz no, Kids property, you no. know. Um, but like other than Spider Man, uh, I think it was just Spider Man Two or maybe Amazing Spider Man Two. That yeah. was like the Tobey Maguire second movie, um, just very well made game. Okay, it was based on I actually, movie, but extremely yeah. I will actually say this: the Spider Man Friends and Foes for the PS2 was like one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, and the Prowler, not Aaron Davis, the Hobby Brown Prowler from this latest set, does make me nostalgic for that game. Now that Prowler is way underpowered than this one. I, I'm obvi- I'm the younger brother, so I always play the second character. So the second character in the first level of Friend and Foes is you play the Prowler, and he like he shoots like gas, green gas canisters or whatever. That's like your main way to damage like enemies in that game, which is like dude, it's super. If you've never played Spider-Man Friend and Foes on the PlayStation Two. First of all, play it the way I did, not having a memory card and trying to play through the entire game in one day. Hard to do, by the way. <laughs> Hard to do. Um, oh, the days of when I yeah. would leave my console running for like solid weeks or months oh, just because dude. I didn't have a save file Such terrible, irresponsible things. I mean, like, yeah. I know I we bought, like, me and my brothers, we bought a second PS2 eventually because we just destroyed our first one, leaving it on all the time. Like, it's so bad. That's I will so say, unhealthy. my GameCube never crashed and I did that for a large majority of my games oh, or maybe i just didn't know how far i was away from getting to like a save point and i was like well i guess it's just gonna stay on pause until like two <laughs> days from now when i get back from <laughs> grandma's house or whatever wherever yeah yeah um, all right okay we also, can move on from this uh, but yeah magneto danger room magnet has uh, oh, yeah. some good uh x-men arcade flavor to so that one although like doesn't really make me nostalgic it makes me like happy that they went out of their way to like make those nods but it at no point was I like, man, I really want to slog through that awful game again. Yeah. Someone's me. Yeah, no. For calling it awful. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. Is next one? Is it mine? Yeah, is for uh, okay. Captain it's, Carter. It's for... Captain Carter. I'm actually, uh, so... really excited for side Dude, so am Really I. excited for these what if. They look I, very well I done. I mentioned last episode how excited I was for what if and just like to buy figures, honestly, because I'm going to go broke on what if. I'm super excited, dude. That Hydra Stomper, like, okay, sure, yeah, Cap, Captain Carter, whatever. Peggy is like Cap. That's fine. I don't care. But like, dude, this Hydra Stomper. Are you kidding me, bro? Looks so hot. That is just that's beautiful. Um, and then the uh, the animation's fun. the The only thing that's that's rough about it is that that Tony Stark voice actor was painful. It's like nails on a chalkboard. Uh, but everybody else is pretty great. I think I really like the animation style. I think it's cool. I think it's cute. Um, and then like, this looks just great. I hope it's the first episode more than anything. I just want this to be the first episode. I don't want to have to wait for my, my captain Carter, my Hydra stomper, Steve Rogers. Like it looks so cool seeing it like destroy tanks. More looks dumb, awesome. Dumb oh dude. Right. Like dude, I loved the, um, agent Carter episode where she in the howlers team up again. And we see dumb, dumb again. Yeah. I'm, I'm always there for more uh, dumb, dumb. Played... So the side tangent's getting a bit long, but I, th- I think is, he also played uh, a role in Arrow. I can't he was like was Damien season. Dark yeah, or Damien something, Dark wasn't Arrow. he? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. No, I didn't. But I, I do, I do really think that's like a, whoever that is a good actor. Um, oh yeah, he is. For I sure. just wish there would have been uh, more <laughs> Howling Commando stuff. So, anyways, Wizkid says we're always hyped for Captain Carter. Of course, we have a, a comment by Mutant Headcrab here. I'm hyped for information on unreleased 2020 <laughs> Hero Clicks products. <laughs> He's, the, uh, the art of turning anything into what he wants it to be is yeah, truly the spin. Yeah. The spin on this man would put uh, drag <laughs> Bill O'Reilly to shame. Oh, well, there you oh, go. Oh, okay. that too. That's nope. probably I was doing the no spin zone, but nah, nah, go for it. Keep going. All right. <laughs> Uh, let's see. next up. We've got uh, Wizkid saying, "What's more exciting than the Fastball Special X Men Rise and Fall HeroClix pre-release events? Local game stores will begin hosting events 811. For more info, check with your local store or check here." Wizkid's link to the whatever they added an image of the new uh, Wolverine and Colossus from the Rise and Fall set. Of course, like those be the Fastball Special. Um, let's see. We've got ooh, we've got a chain. Of response here. We, there's quite a bit. <laughs> Let's see. We've got a mutant head crab says, you know what else is exciting? Finding out older con exclusives became available on your online store via word of mouth because you never bothered to publicly tell anyone. I, you know, I, I think the, he might be a little sarcastic here. I don't think he thinks that's exciting no, at all. I don't think that he thinks that's yeah. exciting. Uh, and then a uh, good old... <laughs> Aries Edge, what do they call that? Mars Mars Blade, call it. And obviously, you're not looking hard enough, as I've gotten emails of restocks in their store from Wonder Woman 80 to Old Con. So it continues to go on, but I'll just say, uh, not quite podcast friendly. Mister Mars Edge there gets a little, uh, little angry. Newton head crab. Yeah, old, old Mars Cliff here is really, uh, <laughs> really not watching his <laughs> mouth. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do, what do we got now here? Oh, oh dude. I think the next up is Kibble Scuffle is one. This of is one I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of new players. I I'm not gonna lie, I couldn't help myself to comment on this. Normally I like I like I won't comment on Wiz Kids as anything, but like I won the Kibble Scuffle at Worlds and I have played it with my family, and it is a strange board game. It's very simple, it's very easy. Um but yeah, they're like Kibble Scuffle is one of our favorite games to demo for new players. Uh we have mutant headcrabs. I used to demo hero clicks for new players. The new players quit because of the massive power keep and rising costs. Of course, uh, there's oh man, Mars Cliff here uh, likes to show up again. Uh, man, he says you mean the first booster price increase in probably a decade? Yes, there is a power creep in all gaming. It's been covered over on my YouTube page. A little, little shameless plug on Mars Cliff there. Uh, give it a watch for educational purposes. Uh, are you sure they didn't quit because their teacher was a poor ambassador for the game? <laughs> really shooting, Ooh. really shooting shots. Oh pew, gosh, pew. this goes on for longer. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's quite a few replies on this one. Oh boy. <laughs> oh man, this is great. Mutant headcrab. Oh, MHC, as they say. Uh, lol, talk about it on my YouTube page. I'm the most regular engagement WizKids gets on their Twitter. So you thought you jump on my coats? Oh gosh. Oh man, he's yeah. accusing old Mars Cliff here of jumping Mars on Mars Cliff. Mutant Riding the crab. coattails to Twitter wow. fame by <laughs> Twitter commenting fame. on <laughs> the most regular engagement WizKids gets on their Twitter. Oh, gosh. I can't believe they haven't blocked Mutant Dozens of people yet. read these tweets. At <laughs> Dozens. Least 
at least half dozens. of dozens. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that. Uh, I mean, to be Martin, fair, we might be we might be bringing more attention to this than we are. Oh, we definitely are. But it is. I just... bet he's like they're just riding my coattails to make podcast <laughs> content. Yeah, you guys couldn't find anything to fill it, so you had to use my content. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, this goes on. This goes on for a little bit. Um. I, I do I do so Aries uh, ooh, uh, Mars here uh, goes on to say nobody wants to be on your coattails I assure you I, I might agree with that <laughs> uh, MHC here no and watching. yet here you <laughs> are responding and tagging me <laughs> hoping <laughs> what is this hoping, hoping daddy was daddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, their honor I bet you tip your hat and say mm, the lady oh my god <laughs> This is possibly part of my favorite part of being in this Heroclix community. We don't get a lot of like weird drama, but when we do, it's just so petty and so oh my lame. Gosh. It's like I, I'm, I don't I don't mean to disparage either uh, Mars Cliff here or uh, whoever Mutant Head Crab is. Oh gosh! But man, is this exchange just really lame? <laughs> this is like. <laughs> of all the problems to have in the world. Uh, oh my gosh. I, I want a t-shirt. It's says, hilarious. Daddy with kids. The, the oh, worst boy. part is this was on a post about Kibble Scuffle. Yeah, Kibble of all games. <laughs> Kibble Scuffle. Probably the this most like wholesome dollar game to ever come no, out. It's, it's like, really about feeding cats. You literally yeah. set up three little bowls. <laughs> You try to get the most kibble. You play little cat cards to see how much kibble your cats can eat. And like, it's like, that's literally it. And the box, by the way, it's really cute. I never did a review of this game. But the box itself, you're supposed to shuffle, like, put all of the different kibble bits, because there's like, there's brown and tan and orange. You put it all in the box after you take everything out, you shake it up, and there's a little lip on the box to pour it through. Like you're pouring out a box of kibble, or like of cat food. Like as if cat food doesn't come in humongous bags anymore, but whatever. And it's it's really cute to watch it like drop out of the thing, and it's Man. like it's such clever box design for a game. I love it when the box it can sounds, be part of the game. It sounds really um, uplifting, and uh, it if is. Head crab really happens is. to be a listener, or anyone who listens happens to know the real identity of mutant head crab. Have them get in contact with me specifically, and I will buy them a copy of Kibble Scuffle just so that they have a little bit of light at the end of their time. Yeah. Because the next WizKids post is, Inferno is coming. What do you think is in store for your favorite mutants? A picture of Mystique and Destiny. I'm assuming Inferno uh, is the next X event. Yeah. I'm what, assuming. What Destiny figure is this? Because she has a normal uh, base. Yeah. And it's like the worst. This is the one of the worst digital renderings I've ever seen. I'm not going to like, un, un, unbiasedly, that face is rough. Uh, it's a pretty rough, like, digital... I don't Maybe that's how she looks in comics. <laughs> to be fair, yeah, but Destiny like, looks kind of weird in comics, but... Oh, uh, okay. This yeah, is, like, a very it. strange... Because if it's part of House of X, it doesn't have the correct base. Um, and yeah, prior to that, I don't know when we got a Destiny. Like, it would have okay. been... It like, would have been pre-Oreo base. Future past? Right? No, it would Days of Future Past. Oh. She, wouldn't she be in that? It would be Probably, weird to be yeah. using... But I don't get Inferno is But would they have what had it? digital rendering from back then i don't, I don't know <laughs> i have no um, idea but yeah inferno is coming what do you think is in store for your favorite mutants so this is like a question for people who follow comics who are like interested in these x-men storylines um you know clearly it has something to do with mystique and destiny so maybe you're like oh i really hope xavier gets like his justice done to it you know whatever uh unless you're mutant head crab and then you say i don't know but you know what's not in store WWE Wave 2. <laughs> to this I say, I can't fault the man or woman, whoever Mutant Head Crab is. I can't fault them for for asking questions that are important, like where's WWE Wave 2? Um, yeah. You know who I can fault is Mr. Mars Cliff here who says, do you by any chance actually follow the WWE and any of their products or business outside of the sports entertainment? Because if you did, you might have already had your answer about Wave 2. To that I say, I have, I, I kind of follow WWE, Mr. Mars Cliff, and... Uh, I do a little bit, yeah. What is this in reference to? Why didn't you just say it? Because now I'm very curious. Did something happen? Did like Vince McMahon spontaneously I mean, combust or something? like? Like, we sort of joked about it last week, but the only thing that's happened is that 
they let go of. I think it's yeah. only Bray Wyatt is the only person they like, let go of. Right. So besides him, there's no reason that it shouldn't have been released, right? Yeah. For Wave Two, for what we know of Wave Two, because they still have the rights to. I think everybody else in Wave Two, they didn't make Braun Strowman or anything. Yeah, yeah so like Braun Strowman's not in there, just, and Sting was Ray. a convention exclusive. <laughs> he was uh, a something. We don't even know what yeah. Sting was going to be. We assume well, we know we know he wasn't part of like the main set because yeah, he wasn't previewed with that. So. Um, but in response to that, do you actually follow WWE? Mutant Head Crab comes back with LOL. It does not change the fact that Wiz Kids has not set a thing about a set that was <laughs> God, supposed to be released last year to be fair i don't think they ever gave a date so whether it was supposed to be or not we don't know uh yeah. if there are licensing issues with a hero click set then it falls on whiz kids to alert their customer base to that i say good point if you have yeah, an idea that, like, hey wwe wave two at the very least because there are stores that are offering pre-sales uh, pre-orders on these products at the very least like you should be educating those stores that like hey this deal might not be going through or something um, so as much as I, I think that this exchange is hilarious Mutant Head Crab definitely making some decent points on my end uh, but not to be deterred good old Mars Cliff here responds with unless there are legal entanglements as to why they can't whiz kids downer own Okay, let's whiz kids downer. Oh, anyone an explanation as to at why something isn't being released? Whiz kids Ooh. doesn't owe you an explanation. That's what it was. Okay, uh, you just think you're entitled to. Um, <laughs> in response, Mew Ned Crab says, Are you okay? Question mark. It looks like you had a stroke while typing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to like this mutant head crab it person, was, but they make some funny. He's not entirely comments. wrong. It's I mean, I, it's just a typo. I can't yeah, fault. It's a pretty good old honest Mars cliff like, on that. Say, it's a legitimate edit, typo. It really that, sucks. Like, yeah. Uh, maybe that explains. <laughs> maybe that explains why you can't seem to grasp that a company announcing products and then never speaking of them again is a bad thing. End of chain. Wow. Um, wow. wow. What a none ride. of those responses had any... I, I just want to say none of those responses had anything to do with the upcoming Inferno event or comics <laughs> no. as a whole. Um, somehow we diverted an image of Mystique and Destiny and you talk about WWE Wave 2, which I'm all for normally. You know, but, what's, uh, you know what is strange is that he didn't... Well, they didn't uh, bring up Rise and Fall, since it's like clearly Rise and Fall <laughs> related. There's two characters things. from Rise and Fall, but yeah, instead they were like WWE Wave Two. WWE you know, it'd be a real inferno when Kane brings his hands down on his ring entrance. Uh, that was a real inferno. Where's oh, Wave yeah. Two? Wave Two, or you know, Wave Two here. This might like, be Ricky Steamboat Mutant Dragon, Head Crab. Like, very he? well, could be the Alex Jones of the Hero Clicks world. Oh um, gosh. Oh you know, boy! If, if Mutant Head Crab turns out to have a podcast that I've just never heard of, uh, we'll have to listen and see because it it seems like the ramblings a very ill man for sure. I mean, for the amount of Heroes podcast, that would not surprise me. Not entirely. No. All right, WizKids uh, goes on. Next tweet here is, uh, the WizKids Info Network is currently down for maintenance. Keep an eye here on our social media for updates. We appreciate your patience and understanding. Yes. Oh, Appreciate there's a comment. I'm sure there's <laughs> plenty of understanding. Probably lots of understanding. Uh, we have we have one comment about mutant head crap. Lamau, not not that anyone would notice since y'all never update it. They're updating uh, it right now. What are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> what? To be fair, when WizKids posted, um, I didn't see their initial post that their network with the WizKids info network was down. I only got the post that their the thing was back up. Which is the the very so next one was WizKids Info Network is back up. Thank it's you for up, your yeah. patience. Um, so I'm glad it got back up in a timely manner. It was the same day, but yeah, I I did not even notice. I was at work at the time. Did not notice. Uh, let's see. Uh, the same day as their their info network going down, WizKids posted and said it was brought to our attention that some of the greatest painters among Marvel's heroes and villains are unclicks. Ultimaton. Ultimaton? Ultima, Ultimaton? Janus? Muse? Any artists from Marvel Universe you'd love to see in Heroclix? I don't know any artists in the Marvel, to be honest. Uh, you do know one, actually. Uh, Captain America is an artist. Well, I, yeah. I don't believe you, but 
No, he is. That that was his <laughs> that was his secret identity when he was Steve Rogers. He went to art school uh, before going into the war. He got drafted, uh, not drafted, but you know the whole became Captain America, all that stuff, right? And then when he comes out of the ice, he works as an artist by day. And yeah, no, believe it or not, yeah, Captain America. There's a, a mini reference to it in the first Avengers movie, the first Avenger. I mean, uh, when Captain America is doodling a little monkey with the Captain America uniform and the unicycle or whatever that's uh that's sort of a reference to his artist days but yeah that's actually captain america is an artist that scene always stuck out to me as just like a very weak choice yeah like why is captain america doodling in his notebook like some like fifth grader yeah like it always seemed very very strange um but yeah that seems that seems interesting uh Yeah. yeah as far as i can think if i actually you know cared to respond to this post and i was thinking about comics wise uh, I know way more DC artists, surprisingly, or at least people who like are capable of drawing. Because... Like, is, it, is it Kyle? It's the one I can think Kyle of. Kyle is, yeah, he's for the, sure. Um, and even John is technically an architect, so he's got to have some. Oh, so skill. yeah, he's got to know how to draw out plans Which and print. I always really liked that being helpful for them being Green Lanterns, like being able to kind of process the intricacies of like building something when they make a construct. So a construct's more powerful if you like make it actually physically. Oh yeah. But um, as far as Marvel goes, man, uh, I guess like Wolverine could be considered like a good Chishimi artist. Slices people in <laughs> very artistic ways. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Uh, but let, let's look at the comments here. Let's see. Uh, we've got Jack Kirby, Everett K. Ross, brother Bob. We've got watercolor master. Very interesting comments. And then oh, we've got mutant head crab who says. Not particularly, which gonna be a great comment when you start with not particularly. Yeah. In response to a question, you tell someone's really uh, interested in the conversation you're yeah. having. You think, if oh, they, well, not if they start, it's like, hey, is anyone here a doctor? Not really, but it's gonna yeah. be a great response. Uh, so not particularly, but I'd love to see the artists who make your figure renders get properly credited for their amazing work. Actually, a, a surprisingly that's, uplifting comment. You know, I'm, that's pretty yeah. legit, actually. I can't really hate on that one too yeah, bad. Yeah, to be fair, back when WizKids still used um, physical molds and stuff, uh, yeah. they did have artist credits. It would say who the artists were. Yeah, that was really yeah. cool. Um, I'm guessing because it's digital that like now can kind of... I don't know. You can kind of like just swap in certain body types and stuff. I don't, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, it would be cool if there is like a digital artist in the works there, if they started crediting the whole again. Um, that would be cool. Yeah. I actually, I would be hundred, I would hundred percent support that. That'd be awesome. Cause like, yeah, dude, some of those digital renders, you're just like, that is breathtaking. And you get the figure and you're like, dang, it is still breathtaking. Or sometimes the figures, you know, is garbage, but whatever. Like, <laughs> right. still, you know, there's two sides to every yeah, coin. It's awful. But you're like, Man, that looks amazing. Like some of those digital renders you're looking at, like Old Man Phoenix, we saw his digital render. We're like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait to see that. And it's still amazing in like real life. But yeah, yeah. Like, those renders, they do look great. They look awesome. Yeah. There's, um, I mean, all right. they, they put a ton of work into them. <laughs> oh, um, totally. But yeah, I imagine little... it's like someone at NECA that does the sculpting. I assume it's somebody at NECA that does it. I imagine so, but I don't know. I did oh, have yeah. uh, it, this basically, this is basically the end of uh, the thread. Um, yeah. Just keep an eye out on WizKids Twitter if you want more info, if you want more yeah. hot takes from old Newton Head Crab. Yeah. Uh, but I did have an interesting conversation where we were talking about, um, it was actually Luke from the Discord, talking about how there's going to be a shortage of uh, new sculpts because um, it's just being harder to pro- or harder for uh, companies to make the the mold it comes down to like the the molds because uh a lot of industries are just like struggling still they're struggling to like get like fully processed with all different kind of stuff um so we might be entering like a couple years or maybe like a couple sets worth very kind of sculpt kind of things going on and like hopefully that's not the case but yeah it would be interesting to see if whiz kids had to do like an entire set that sculpts yeah yeah real bad but yikes Definitely an interesting time if that's all right. Well, uh, yeah, I think we can close this thread. Simeon, we, we normally like to rate a thread on some kind of arbitrary rating system, right? Um, right. So these kind of a, a one to ten, but uh, normally a one to ten, 
yeah we'll, oh, some... we'll we'll do like a, a for this one we'll do like a one uh we'll we'll rate it as like a tool uh, a useful tool so like we'll do a one is like yes. something that's really on un- uh right like a screwdriver that's too big for the job that's a right. one uh, too small. A 10 would be like uh i don't know like uh, like a crowbar that's just go. like perfect for smashing stuff including mutant head crabs cr- uh, head crabs in general head crabs in general yeah <laughs> yeah um so yeah yeah well that'll be our rating system um I think I'm going to I'm going to rate this as just like a pure purely like joyful to the back and forth gave me zero zero like new information or like did not make me a better person at all to like read through it uh there's nothing to take away from this at all but just like as like a junk filler pure like fun thing to read uh I'll give it a like a gravity cannon kind of rating yeah, okay like, can you give it a gravity cannon? Okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to give this one a buzzsaw, but you don't, it's just the blade. You don't have access to the gravity cannon. So it's very impractical. <laughs> it's, it's almost useless. Yeah, yeah. It's almost useless. That's probably more likely because, yeah, this it's, is the information a, here is incredibly useless like, thread. Yeah. Uh, but strange weapons, we, we, clearly not related to anything. All right. Well, that is, that is pretty much our topic this episode. We're going to go ahead. Uh, we're going to jump into a ton of listener questions. We have some really cool ones. We have some related to dice, some related to WWE and rules changes, and a few other really fun listener questions. But really quick, uh, quick shout out, guys. If you want to help support the show, the best way to do so is to just leave us a review on whatever you are listening on. So if you listen on Podmean, if you listen on iTunes, Spotify, whatever, leave us a review. If you are listening on YouTube, uh, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you like the video, comment on the video, comment right now. Let me know what weapon you would use <laughs> to describe <laughs> these threads, you know? So, like, yeah, totally. Let us know, guys. And if you want to support the show uh, financially and also get some really cool stuff from it, you can do so on our Patreon. We have a ton of different Patreon goals. A lot of that helps get our podcast equipment up. I was able to get a pop filter. I was able to get a ton of these sound uh, foam squares and stuff. So making the podcast sound better. And then we use a lot of the budget, like all, everything from our Patreon goes back into the show. Uh, we add that to our budget and we use it to make more YouTube videos and all sorts of fun stuff. So right now we have several different goals as far as like Extreme Rules 2 videos or other Rowdyverse style videos or any other really fun like Hot Ones videos that we want to do. You can do so um, by checking out our Patreon. And of course, doing that will get you action tokens and stickers and all sorts of cool stuff. And just for the month of August, only in August, I will be giving every Patreon member that uh, either ups their Patreon to $10 in the month of August or joins at the $10 rank or already is donating $10 or more, uh, they will each get a Do You Even Clicks poster sent to them, but only if you join the Patreon in August or have been on the Patreon for $10. So if you do that, you'll get this once in a lifetime Beautiful. Do you even clicks poster from the last sort of meme hero clicks video I made, or do you even dicks poster, depending on uh, how good your eyesight is or what your how your brain work, <laughs> works. Um, but yeah, I got a digital scan made of the poster. I'll be making those this week, and I'll be uh, set, hopefully sending them out. So yeah, if you want a do you even clicks poster, and I'll make a post somewhere on YouTube, you can go ahead check out our Patreon. That is uh, all of our links to our YouTube Patreon. Everything is in the podcast show notes. So thank you guys so much for supporting the show. We can now go ahead and jump into some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Uh, First from our Discord. And of course, our Discord is all for Patreon members. So you can join for as little as $1 and get access to our Discord. We have a great community. We play Bad Sam. We try to play it before every single Heroclix game. And if you do well enough in Bad Sam, we give away extra prizes for Patreon, which is really, really cool. So we have a, a question here. To do, we're skipping that one. Do that one. So, uh, Luke Luke says, fueled entirely by his recent Fulcum delivery, what type of teams do you think each buy it by the case promo figure works the best on? See, so, I mean, so the buy it by the case promo figures are Lex and Brainiac, the Fulcum Abominus, Plastic Man, and then Gorilla Grodd. Yeah. Uh, so, I actually think what was I was gonna say Fulcum probably I think Gorilla Grodd actually a little bit more like stuff uh, so 
what types of teams? Uh, clearly, Fulcum is just going to be robot. And, I mean, Fulcum can fit on actually three types of teams. It can go on Justice League because there's enough stuff going on there. So you can have like an Alpha Strike with Atoms and Micron and then have Fulcum in the back or just as like a cheap prob pretty solid uh fulcum can fit on robot slash sentinel because there's team up cards there's shenanigans to get make robot sentinel um so don't die tech with a cheap retail is not a bad option uh especially when um uh, fulcum can potentially be sidelined when master mold becomes legal and be oh, one yeah. of, like the first things totally. that you quote unquote call in with master um pretty decent option there pretty awesome option there uh so those are like that's three and then just unthemed because it's a decent retaliator um decent dials all over to be honest but uh if you're just like 25 points shy and you can't quite fit a 30 point phoenix on without redoing your whole team uh you've got the fulcum uh then I think the the next most impressive would probably be Gorilla Grodd, who's got that really cool perplex kind of power. Oh the, yeah, uh, that's awesome. The reversion, like rev- I don't know, de evolution ray or whatever it's called. Uh, but clearly, Gorilla Grodd is going to fit on animal theme teams, which right now animal theme teams are kind of like an they're like an up and coming kind of like interesting thing. We saw was it Tyler Spees that won with animal theme at uh, the Clicks Cup? Uh, the Clicks Cup, yeah. Who won three hundred? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, Gorilla Grodd's kind of like a mid pointer. Uh, I don't know if he replaces anything on that specific team. But just knowing that you have a real solid keyword to build around him, that's definitely like an option. Uh, you've got Chip, you've got, I mean, especially like in Golden and Silver Age, there's like even better uh, animal stuff. But then you've also got like Wendigos, and whatever crazy nonsense that you need. Uh, as far as Injustice League goes, I think Gorilla Grodd probably doesn't really go. I, I mean, you can put him on that casually, of course, but uh, I just don't see and then Justice League really doing a whole lot. Uh, yeah, not really. Like, and Justice League just does not have the bones to stand up on. Like, it's got some neat stuff here and there, but it's just not enough. Yeah, it's it just doesn't get as much love as uh, Justice, especially <sighs> not, not as much at as, like, all. I Avengers mean, if they had more of those, like, really cheap 40, 50 point characters that were like. They need something that it's at least on the level of Batman. And even microphone Batman doesn't see as much play as he used to anymore. So, like, yeah, you know, you need something at least on that level to to make them a serious, like, thinking about playing them, like, super competitive. But even so, even playing them casually, they're still not uh, as great of a team, sadly. Yeah, for sure. Uh, next up would be, I think, Plastic Man fits on, like, the most. Because he's got that 40 and 20 point line. I yeah. think those are the two point lines. He can pretty much just like Fulcum can fit on a non theme team if he wants. Of course, there's the Justice League. I can't remember the rest of his keywords. Probably like Detective, uh, Detective, Police, the Terrifics. Wow, uh, Freedom <laughs> Fighters and All Star Squadron. Uh, you yeah, can have a Terrifics I mean, team with just him and then Mister Terrific for 110 points. Yeah, there uh, you go. And then a bunch of Mister Terrifics, I guess. But yeah, uh, yeah. So there's. Only a few keywords that actually have modern equivalents that can fill out a 300-point team. Um, but because he's so cheap and because he does something that... Uh, I don't know. I Because he's literally the only character in modern that can jump off the board, turning into an indestructible, immobile... Op- um, there's no other character that can do this. It leaves you a lot of options as to what you... So... You could throw him on a secret six team, as we said, uh, target with the blue beetle scarab. Um, you'd be able to like target through that object if you wanted. To. Alternatively, just because the objects are kind of good, he works on like a lot of teams just as like a filler, like blocking kind of like tie up. Piece. He's actually like a really really solid at all point. Value. And then yeah, you've got the you've got the Justice League. That's an option to build around. Um, although I think that I think Justice League at the current moment is a very Alpha Strike kind of style, and I think Plastic Man has to go on a team that's got a little bit more finesse kind of. And yeah. I'm not entirely sure what like the best use for him would be, but I do know that he's actually got a ton of potential. Oh, I definitely think he does. I mean, gosh, for 40 points, that's I mean, amazing. It's, 
definitely point denial. If I was running like a oh, absolutely. Pure point denial I, team, you know, some some parts of me wishes he was more points for point denial. He <laughs> just right. uses leave him as an object. He just chills there, like okay, yeah, have just fun. Turn him into yeah. a traffic cone, and your opponent's yeah. like, "Well, I'm not going." Yeah. Don't post score. office box. What are you gonna do about it? Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. It's funny. And, uh, uh, yeah, no, totally. The last one would be uh, Lexiac the Lex Luthor Brainiac combo. Uh, I believe Robot and Injustice. Robot and Justice League. Uh, politician Project Cadmus. Secret Society Supervillains. Scientist. I think. Yeah, that's so it. Like, that's it. They are uh, 150 <sighs> points. Yeah. And when you look at them first, value. you're like, oh wow, cool. Uh, look at that, 12, 19, 4 damage, 6 range, 2 bolts. Uh, but they don't have range. It's charge, flurry, plasticity, giant reach 2, top dial, which isn't, isn't bad. For 150 points, they are a close combat piece. They roll on to like an, oh, a, a bad pulse wave power later, which is like pulse wave, steel energy, but with closer range attacks to heal up, which is all right. The nerf to pulse wave really kicks them in the, you know, where it counts. Like it really hurts. Um, they have some stop clicks in there, but man, like starting with impervious and not invincible, ah, dude, it really, it really sucks. Like 150 points. They're just not a tent pole. They just, no. they really aren't. They should be more range heavy top dial. It, do you just, I think, yeah, they're just so the not a tent pole. Only it's thing really I tough. I say that they fit on a higher point casual where you just kind of want to try them out because yeah, I, I do not think it's going to be your main, your main <sighs> attacker. And at 150 points, it not only has to, not only should be your main attacker at 100, it also should be, I mean, half your build. It should, it should be like a solid support. Yeah. Uh, lockdown, Pete, a lot of different stuff. So and it just does this not is, fill a lot of the gaps. That's my opinion of it at 150 points. If it had a 40 point line with click five being its top dial, amazing figure. Absolutely amazing figure. Um, but they don't. They're just, they're only 150 points. Them not having a split dial anywhere really hurts them. Even if they had a 100 point line, which was like click three was their starting line, I would be like, oh, awesome figure. Love it. Like it still sucks that it starts with charge flurry. You know, I wish it would at least have sidestep charge flurry giant reach too, because then like that's really good, you know? Um, like plasticity doesn't help you when you have giant reach. Like it just, it doesn't. So. Like, that is a bit of a bummer. But, it, yeah, if they had, like, a 100-point line that started on click 3 or, like, a 50- or 40-point line that started on click 5, which, like, it's their running shot, pulse wave, impervious, perplex, 11 attack, 4 damage, like, click, that would be awesome. Or, like, yeah, their 11 attack, 19 defense, 4 damage, prob, whatever, charge, flurry, plasticity on click 3 for, like, 100 points, then I'd be like, oh, yeah. Then there's options to play it as, but since it's only 150 points your build, it sadly starts with, you know, impervious. It does not have protected outwit. <sighs> I can't. I cannot recommend this. And yeah. I love Lex Luthor. I love Lex Luthor so much. I, and and I love this not... episode. Um, to be fair, he was taken out by, but also to be fair, he took out most of the justice. Which I, I yeah, just do not like see... if he's, you know, if he's gonna body Superman, Wonder Woman, yeah. Green Lantern, you know, like. He should probably have like a special impervious that works on like a three through right? six. Like this dude's um, supposed to be able to like take out the Justice League, and Flash is supposed to just beat him by like dying, pretty much. I guess like going to the Speed Force. Yeah. Like he's got like sacrifice himself. Yeah. yeah. So I have to go should faster. Be, should, the one should thing I've never done before. I'm gonna <laughs> go faster. Every episode of The Flash starts off with "Hi, yeah. I'm Barry Thank Allen, you, the fastest man alive," CW. and it and it and it ends with "How do I go faster? I'm not fast enough." Like, oh, okay, run, Barry, yeah. run. Uh, CW is kind of re not gonna. Oh, I man, really Waller's... enjoyed it when it first started, but like, there's only so many Waller... times you can, dude, you can out I'm... <laughs> run. Some... I'm not gonna lie, I. I tried to watch The Flash, and so like this is my my theory for every time someone recommends a TV show, I watch one episode when they recommend. If I don't get hooked on the first one, I don't watch it again. Um, and then every time someone recommends it past that, I'll I'll watch another episode. I'm currently sitting at uh, episode seven of the first season of The Flash, and it has not yet hooked me to make me want to watch more. It's such a bad show, and maybe it doesn't it doesn't start bad, but it's so just like I can already tell it's like oh every episode. You gotta it's go faster, hard Barry. because there's some <laughs> redeeming like, okay. moments in the CW like universe where they've got Legends of Tomorrow, Arrow, Flash. I don't think Supergirl was technically in there, but they tied that in. Uh, did, there's yeah. some redeeming moments for sure, 
and like the crossovers are interesting and I'm like, man, I really love the story so I can get these crossovers. And then you get to the crossover and you're like, that wasn't worth watching season four of the arrow. I, uh, <laughs> like the entire, I actually four of the arrow. really, really enjoyed legends of tomorrow, but yeah. I, I clocked out once they did the giant blue stuffed oh, animal yeah. fight. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm done. Uh, I'm done. I can't even See remember the name of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, was, with our nope. powers combined, we make. Nope. And it was like, Gumbri that was, attack. That was just terrible. And I'm like, well, Probably this is it for me. This is where I, this is my stop. This is where I get off. The, the top worst uh, season finales, any kind of hero yeah. related, <laughs> Yikes, comic dude. related, anything. You Anyways, have so little, much to pull from. A off DC. tangent. We just we instantly started just pooping on the flash <laughs> out of nowhere. I feel a little bad. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's the end Lex of Luke's Brainiac. Yeah. That's Lex Brainiac. Uh, Alex the Enchanter says, oh, Alex Mercy says, I bought and played this game. It's called Clever Cubed. It's a brand new and the third installment of a series of games that can roughly be, be described as Yahtzee on crack. Uh, he has a few dice-related questions. In Hero Clicks, as you guys know, we roll dice. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't. If you play on Roll20, we click buttons. Uh, but yes, he says, what is your favorite die or dice that you've lost? Wow. Hmm. I like that twist yeah. to that question. Yeah, that that's you've lost. Man, that's some heartbreak right there. It's better to have <sighs> rolled and to have lost to have never rolled at all. Gosh. As it, the I mean, yeah, I'll agree, though. Yeah. So I I don't have a lot of dice that I've lost. I've had dice that I've given away or like gotten rid of at some point. Um, the only pair that I've ever lost, I believe it was part of like the Batman Alpha game, um, which was like a Heroclix adjacent game. And it came with a, a set of dice that were like less than a quarter of an inch. It was like one eighth of an inch. And it was like the tiniest set of dice I had ever seen. And I just thought it was so hilarious that I would like use them in all kinds of games. Well, the problem was um, like a slight breeze could knock them off of a map. And yeah, like at one point, I think I like bumped a table or something. It just like disappeared from the map and I, oh, no. everywhere. but it was, it was literally, it was so small. It could almost fit inside the pip of another dice. So it was That's like funny. impossible to find. Uh, I, think I've but, seen, I think I've seen those dice before. I'm pretty sure I've seen you uh, roll them. Oh they're yeah. Pretty, yeah. Great. I, I used them as often as I could for a while because it was just like <laughs> hilariously tiny dice. They were so small. You could fit them on like the base of the character that you were using. So like if I had to count something like Oscar's like submission or uh, the Oscar lock tokens, I could like put those dice on her dial and it wouldn't take up enough room to like block any. Um, but as far as I know, that's the only set that I've truly lost, at least as an adult. My, my favorite pair of dice that I lost and I only lost one of them, sadly, as the story goes, but uh, my, my go-to dice ever since Earth X came out were the Earth X Captain America dice. I love them. They're beautiful blue. Like, they were great. They had the silhouette of Earth X Cap. Those are my go-to dice. I played so many games with those dice. And I, I honestly, it kills me just having the one. But I lost them uh, during the Rock Sealed for uh, Dark Phoenix, the Dark Phoenix Saga set. And ever since I lost them, then I lost uh, I didn't lose the next game, but I did lose that game. And I'm just like looking for it. I'm like, oh, it's dice, got this dice. And, you know, I'm playing against someone. And he's like, hey, you know, like, I, I don't see it on my side. You can't see it on your side. Can we, like, you know, just keep going? Which I understand, you know, it's tournaments, whatever. But I'm like, man, if this was any other dice, I would just like, okay, let's roll. But I was like, just like, no, please, my Captain America dice, no. Um, then I was like, he, cut, he cuts me deep. So, hey, if there's a listener out there that has one uh, Captain America Earth X dice or has a pair they want to get rid of. I'm your man. I'll I'll take them off your hands. Like I, I really do need those dice. Just talking about them makes me nostalgic. I loved those dice, but yeah, that was that was rough. Uh, his second question is: What is the most you've ever paid for a set of dice? Uh, the most I've ever paid. When he says a set, I assume he means the most I ever paid yeah. was when I contacted good old Stand Up uh, stands for those the really f hilarious Dial H cowboy hat pip dice. Um, I think. I bought like a full like 20, so like 10 sets. Does that sound about right? I feel like it was I, Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like that was the most I ever bought of like a single style of dice. And so uh, those ended up being like I bought them just um, outside of that. The most expensive I ever almost bought would have been, um, man, what's the, what is the name of that game now? 
Oh no. Um the the one Smash one... City? Yes. <laughs> really? Smash oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I almost bought into Smash City and at uh Nationals they were um at Nationals they were hosting like a thing for it in like the next venue over. And I went up to like their booth and I was like, oh yes, Smash City. This will be hilarious. I'll buy one. And I looked and it was like $80 for the base set of Smash City. I was like, oh oh my gosh. And it was just like a large foam dice, the kind that you would, I say like the kind that you would see at like a pool because they have like those weird pool balls that are like absorb water and you can throw them. But clearly you wouldn't use dice at a pool. So I don't know why they, that's what they reminded me of. But yes, that was almost the most. So I don't, some gamers, like if we had some, like some real D and D fans in the, in the crowd, they'd be really unimpressed with like what I spend on like dice. I don't have a lot of dice. Um, mostly like, so the most expensive pair I, I own are probably my metal captain America dice. They cost me a dollar because I want them in a raffle. Um, the most expensive pair of dice I spent money on are these. I mean, they're probably 15 bucks. They're these really sweet um, gravity dice on cool stuff. I saw them and they have a, their own like magnetic case and you can balance oh, yeah. them on the side, which is really sweet. They're just like this really nice cut. They don't spin. They don't whatever. That's my big fault for dice with the rounded edges is like the spinning. But I believe they're called gravity dice. Um, and they're on cool stuff. I think that's where I bought them a few years ago, honestly, before they were even a sponsor of the show. I bought these bad boys. Um, I'm trying to see if they exist. Okay, they're not called gravity dice. I'll figure out what they're called, but they're like balanced dice or something. Uh, but they cost me like 15 bucks. They come in like, I bought them in like gray. Um, I think they're also in like gold. If you want to be a little extra, they're in gold. And then they're also in uh, like red. Um, but I really like those dice. There's the, some of the nicest feeling dice. Mine are getting pretty worn out by now. Just, you know, they're metal or whatever. And like, they just, they feel good in the hand, like 15 bucks. And even like when I, you know, playing D and D, I always just borrowed whatever dice somebody else had there. Um, and then eventually yeah. someone gave me some dice. Like I, I was like, I'm not going to buy into this game. D and D is technically a free game to play. I do yeah. not have to buy anything for this game, no, and that's D&D how I'm, is... that's how I'm going to keep it. <laughs> it can be D&D very expensive, is almost absolutely, or it like can be free. free. Um, yeah, you can play it 100. percent You can play it for free if you try hard enough to put the effort playing it for free. Um, but the customizing of like your stuff is like part of the fan process. So like the more you get into it, you're like, I, um, yeah, and that yeah, I do have a set of D and D dice that's like a very I think it's like ten bucks, twelve. Uh, but I bought like a, just a super Bailey kind of pair uh, for yeah. real cheap. I did buy when I was traveling through Colorado. When I bought a set of stone dice, like stone carved, like they were hand carved out of stone and then like hand painted. And the pips are like kind of off. So I don't think if I were to be in any kind of tournament that actually cared about legitimacy of dice, I don't think they're clearly oh, sure. not like centered or like weighted correctly. Right. They're more of like an artsy, purpose. like cool right. thing. But yeah, they, I kept those, uh, in my backpack. Like when I, my, it's kind of like a clicks backpack that fits my satchel, but I kept those in the pocket of them and never once you, that was nice. Ooh. You know what, you know what I never understood those like little boxes, those like clear boxes that are full of like 30 dice, but they're all like the same the D6 same or color. something. So like yes. what like what do I need this for? Why would I I've spend seen people like ten dollars for literally like rolling dice of the like those kind of dice and get mad that like they're rolling bad? Set those two aside and then grab two more from the exact same box that look the exact same. And I'm like, well, yeah. I get, uh, I understand different... swapping out dice. It doesn't matter yeah. what they look like. At the same time. If you're like superstitious enough to think that like your rolls are based on like the specific set of dice you have, you literally just grabbed identical dice. So yeah, it seems weird, but yeah, I yeah I've never Strain. once needed thirty of the same color die. Yeah, I just I just don't I totally do not get those. Um, all right, and the last dice question we have here is: What are your favorite things to do with dice that don't involve hero clicks? Yeah. Mm. I, dude, I don't know. I play Heroclix. Like, that's my dice game. I have a few other games that also include dice, but I don't, I don't really enjoy them more than Heroclix. I mean, if I have to pick a pair of dice I enjoy, I'll go with the Evil Dead game because that has like a deadite on one side, a blank, and then like a chainsaw. It's like those are just like cool dice for that game, I guess. But like, there's nothing I do with dice besides roll them. 
Uh, and normally I'm rolling them for hero clicks. So yeah, that'd be those would be my favorite. Uh, those would be my only other favorite pair of dice, I guess. And then in uh, Terror Below, which is basically like a Tremors board game. If you like the amazing cult classic, beautiful movie Tremors, um, there's a weapon where the, the entire game is on a six by six grid. And then you have uh, two dice. Normally you roll them to see where a worm will pop up. But there's a weapon where you can roll those two dice and you instantly kill any worm on that space or kill any player on that space, um, which is pretty fun when that works. Um, so I do enjoy that. Those are those are pretty fun. Uh, but that'd be about it for non hero clicks dice. Yeah, you know, like I, I don't really have like a ton of like fa- dice or like a meme, um, but that reminds me of like a story. So I used to have a, a friend named, we called him Ramblin' Bob, mm. and he used to steal, gamble, and rob. He thought he was the smartest guy around, you know? <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I told him once or twice to stop playing cards, uh, shooting dice, and he's in the jailhouse now. <laughs> oh gosh, shut up. <laughs> shut up, Jimmy. I can't believe it took me that long. All right, shut up. <laughs> Gosh, uh, he's gracious. in the jailhouse now. Now, uh, okay. No, I, I honestly. Uh, Next question. Favorite thing to do with dice, <laughs> other than like actually playing dice, just uh, sorting them. I guess that's my, oh, my favorite really? thing. Is I have a box with all my dice in it, and I do enjoy getting them all in the correct place. They shift. That is like a super lame answer. So that's my favorite. It is. I guess. I mean, you could have at least been like, yo, man, you know how people like make portraits with dice that have pips, you know, yeah. like six sided dice portraits. Those are kind of neat. I would never do that, nor would that be something I would yeah, think that's my favorite thing to do with them. But uh, that's a really cool, like artistic way to use dice. I will say one thing. I don't like dice that have I, I specifically don't like D sixes that have one, two, three, four, five, six as the letter and not as individual pips Ooh. that really bothers me i i quite heavily dislike that yeah it's in my mind it's easier to do the math with the pips on the dice for some reason it just is um because of whatever looking at it for so long so when i see someone roll dice that have you know the two you know whatever like written out non so i think it should be illegal to put like a specialized uh picture not on the six I think it should only be allowed on the six. And it was like, oh, well, what if it's like says it's a crit miss and I put it on the ones. It's like, well, that doesn't make sense when you roll like a four and a one and it says crit miss on the one, but not on the four. Like, you know, just leave leave the ones alone. Leave the these fours, two, five, leave that all alone. Only put the I think that should just become standard across the board. Yeah. And then it doesn't become confusing. But I don't know. I, I pretty much agree, uh, but our first dial inch dice that were ever made, we did have it on the one. I don't know why. I don't know why that seemed to be the only option it was on the one, which made a lot of people be like, oh, man, it's the only time I like rolling a crit miss. I'm like, don't lie to me. <laughs> don't lie to me that you enjoy rolling a crit miss with our Super dice. Super cool when I get to show off your podcast. Logo. Yeah, when like I'm no one wants losing. No one wants to see that. No one wants that negative. Uh, that was the only time that Hero Clicks judge, Jay Solomon, told me this is the only time in any tournament ever someone told me i couldn't roll use dice and i let my opponent know i was using the dice that had the thing on the one and then jay solomon looked at them and he said you can't use these and i was like okay and i rolled captain america dice the rest of the day but that was like the first time in any tournament ever i thought it was pretty funny uh anyways specifically probably because of that reason it's yeah. confusing it's it, yeah confusing. It, it is confusing it is absolutely confusing i'm like yeah i'm not gonna dispute that fact it's totally confusing uh next up L. Oh, sorry, I almost skipped there. Uh, ben Jones says, as we wait, 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 wait for wave two of WWE clicks, got some questions about wave one. Which clicks has improved the most since the rules update, Simeon? Is Ben Jones secretly mutant head crab? Mutant head crab. <laughs> Ooh. Seems. No. Mm. Um, I think I'd know. I, I have a better guess as to who that might be. Definitely is not Australia. They'd have better whiz kids. Um. Which clicks have improved since the rules updates? Since all of the entirety of uh, WWE Hero Clicks have Indomitable, they were already willpower from the start. Um, the team ability 
did not change. A lot of stuff didn't change. So it's going to be, it's going to come down to like who now combos better with the new stuff since none of them are range based. That means like who has like flurry, close combat expert, uh, exploit, like those kind of things. Um, honestly, one of the figures that's gotten not really like better, but I would say is a more interesting pick now because of Perplex not being able to boost damage is Triple H, who has Empower for characters with his keyword. If you can find a way to slip Triple H onto a team or give him a keyword with like matching that team, uh, I think it's like a really solid play because it gives Empower to everyone with the shared keywords. Um, really boost your damage when like your opponent might not expect it you know suddenly your three damages are now sixes a four is now a seven it's something that's not as expected nowadays the current um and then on top of that i yeah i think oscar has definitely gotten an improvement uh the special attack combos with either top dial a close combat expert or bottom dial or it's mid dial, whatever, uh, exploit. So either way, you get like a boost with a combo that you couldn't pull off prior to. Yeah, I would agree. It'd be really cool. Um, I think who I'm going to go with is, you know, I think Asuka is obviously a big one just because she has charge close combat expert. And I think that's the only character in the set that had two powers that didn't combo together that do now that I can think of on top of my head. But uh, with Invincible being benched on all these sets right well one set so far but it's one people are playing a lot of um and for the future i think uh, anyone that is penetrating gets a big boost so i i'm kind of liking kane a lot now with his fiery posts to deal two penetrating damage to uh the people within six squares that are next to two or more ropes uh obviously you're gonna have to put this on like hedge maze or something really heavy with blocking or hindering but uh, I definitely like uh, like this cane who can like AOE effect like pen two pen to everybody, which is really really cool. Yeah, and um, can't be targeted from range. And he can't be targeted from range. Yeah, like he, I think um, and you, you can get this cane. You can get them there. So if they if you lose map and then they can whatever you can like move all the way up and maybe you can do this on different turns too. And then TK him up because he's a monster mystical politician. Like those all have TK. Yeah. somewhere in there uh onslaught could tk him up and then he can do power action within six <laughs> two pen well it would be I just, I just like pain it would be like you know? kane grand entrance onslaught phases tk tk yeah phases free. tk for and free. now it's kane is what like 14 squares 14 that's squares. a 20 square 20 yeah. square reach with kane and his fiery posts which but i love what's what's amazing is like even what i would consider like more competitive players kind of like i wouldn't uh, I'm not going to say they slept on, like, Grand Entrance or anything, but they still kind of underestimate it. So, like, I've played against several people with WWE where I'll use Grand Entrance, and they'll be surprised that all of my characters are now halfway up the map without an action token. Or, like, halfway up the map, and then I charge another, like, six squares or something crazy like that. And I'm like, yeah, I get to move my full speed value as a free action turn one. Like, it... It just happened. Yeah. It's beautiful. They're, they don't expect the reach, which is awesome. Uh, next up, uh, has the stacking of powers helped any WWE clicks under the new rules? Any examples you can think of? Yeah, I think we kind of went over a few. Um, if you add in equipment, like the Power Gem or the Waldo Arms or anything like that, if you add stuff like that in, then clearly it makes some characters better as well. Uh, the Stone Cold that has the vehicular assault can charge, I believe it's his full sp uh, in a straight line. That like that's pretty awesome. Like he can you know use cool. the Power Gem or whatever. Um, but yeah, like there's there's a lot of like little kind of like uh, power combos. To be honest, WWE didn't combo a ton of powers. There wasn't like a ton of special ones. Um, and then I think did Macho Man already have? I think Macho Man already had a stipulation, so he probably wasn't already yeah able to like Sadly, increase yeah. damage. It was plus two except damage. Yeah, so doesn't get any worse so that's like i think wwe can be summed up with definitely doesn't get any worse they were already in dom the whole set the whole like alternative gameplay was already in dom no pushing damage um 
and so at the least they get to like combo like a new set of powers. Um, WWE powers for the most part didn't change. You can combo some of those with like charge and stuff now that you couldn't before just because of like the wording, but other than that, really not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, I pretty much I'm like the same thing. There's not a lot of stacking powers I can think of that are amazing for WWE two. Um what is or WWE Wave One, what has been the downside to WWE clicks since the rules change? I honestly don't think there's a huge downside to WWE clicks since the rules change. Um, the biggest thing that WWE books had going for it was the team ability, which was grand entrance ability to be targeted for range or outwit, uh, one and the last three clicks, usually the blue click. Um, none of that's changed. Uh, you could consider if you want to like pretend like WizKids has a defined point formula, you could say that like they're overcosted now because they all had end on, but realistically, right. all had willpower originally now it's yeah. nothing. Realistically, I don't think really. I don't think they were overcosted. I think they were costed when set, which is how I think more costed. But um, yeah, I, I don't think there really is a downside to WWE clicks. I think if anything, they could have only gotten better. Um, you know, it might be like marginally in some cases to not at all, and then in some other cases, might have been like a huge. There is. There is one downside I can think of, and it's what we talked about before, but um, being able to control when you're able to pop off your signature, because that all is based mm. off having one action token. Yeah. And then I, don't know a how thing, I, I think, yeah, like, because this was your big that. thing with your um, popper state winning team. Yeah. Was you could clear all your tokens, and then, especially with HBK, because HBK, you didn't want to have to waste a turn just yeah. moving or doing nothing to give him a token. So on your opponent's turn, you could theme prob whatever and give him a token. Yeah. And then he could activate, you know, tuning up a band and whatever else, right? So now that you, now that when a theme prob, this is the only negative, I think, I'm pretty sure this is the only negative impact it's that theme prob not giving small, tokens has. Yeah, very small right? clicks. Uh, there's, <laughs> but yeah, yeah it's, it's now, literally a now single you set. Can't, and inside that set, it's even like smaller. Uh, like the playable ones. But, or who it's useful for. Yeah, yeah right, yeah. Who actually yeah, benefited a huge amount by getting a, a theme team prob action. And this yeah. was only like a four-year period because prior to 2017, if you were given a theme team prob, you weren't allowed to do an action afterwards. And from 2017 on to 2021, yeah. when the rules changed again, you could be given a theme team prob control and also an actual power action that turn. Um, so yeah, like... A, my my states win, which I just did a video on this, and I don't know why I didn't remember that because um, the whole team predicated on me being able to do like a breakaway, and whether I succeeded or not, or like an attack, whether I succeeded or not, I could prob it like potentially two or three times, depending on like where characters were on their dials, and put them at the what they need for their signature because on their signature move they need to have one action to, to activate that so um yeah if they were cleared and or like if preser card took like an action token off of them now they've got one that kind of thing there's a lot of stuff that goes into it but essentially if they had zero action tokens and i probed some like innocuous thing i could have preser card attack somebody and then prob it with asuka stone cold Shawn michaels and now they all have an action token and I can use their signature that same turn. So like it was, yeah. that was like a huge benefit that WWE had uh, just controlling the ebb and flow because now Shawn Michaels, I don't even know if he's usable now because your opponent not only it's can clearly see that you've like, you've locked in the three tuning up the band tokens you've tuned up the band, and then I you see. have to give him, so it's like three <laughs> actions you tune up the band or three turns you tune up the band fourth turn you give him one action so that he has the one action for the signature yeah and then hopefully by the fifth turn your opponent hasn't just like tapped him for like one damage Nuked or whatever Shawn Michaels. Or, yeah. yeah just and completely totally messed him up yeah. yeah dude and then another bad thing i guess speaking of like we're really hyper focusing on poor sean here but uh he can't perplex damage anymore. So you no. used to be able to, if you didn't want to have to go plus three to attack and damage, you could just take your plus two to attack and then perplex up your damage. But now you can't do that anymore. So you have to be a bit more creative with like empowers and stuff or whatever to get like Shawn Michaels up to that like 
you know, big, big punch. Because, yeah. like, when you have a 13 attack, you know, you don't need a, you don't need a 14 attack, you know. I, yeah. I assume most I mean, players, you know. You have a two I, damage. I, I usually do. <laughs> but uh, well, yeah, I, also, you all, I would also stuff, perplex not, but... up Sean's speed uh, because his signature would move him up half to half his speed, speed value. Oh, so. sure. Uh, it's normally 10, but if you perplex his speed up once, then, so it gets him one yeah, extra square. But yeah, uh, Sean sure. definitely Sean. did not benefit from this change. Um, I think he, he gets hit the hardest. Absolutely. He, yeah, I don't I don't think he changes too much for the worse, but he definitely, definitely did a lot better. There's like, there's zero upwards change. So it's like, at best, stay the same. At worst, be Sean Michaels. Yeah. Uh, all right, so... That is oh no no let's do some more uh is and then just straight up asks is Asuka the best WWE clicks I I will say no um but I think she's good I don't think she's the best uh well I don't like Asuka so I don't want to play her and I never bought her <laughs> so if she's good or not I don't know but like we got Eddie Guerrero you yeah. can see a lot more competitive Eddie Guerrero play, top, top dial is him. cheaper than Asuka top dial um that too so I'll go over because I've played Asuka a lot. I'll go over my top big oscar mark this guy yeah big oscar stan uh well in in the wrestling business we have to call you a mark cindy and i'm literally we have to sorry oh okay uh Uh, (laughs) um so top dial my biggest problems with oscar is top dial she does not have an attack power so if you start her at the best potentially the best click that a wwe character can have which is their starting click where they can't be targeted from range she doesn't get what i consider her best power her dial and that's the oscar lock which is submission hold and then you increase damage plus one for each oscar lock the opponent has basically a maximum of three damage which at this point in the game gets through almost every single it gets through every single standard defense power and it gets through almost every special defense powers um the oscar lock is just amazing but you have to play her at 40 to start with that and that's a real short die four clicks where she can be targeted from range so if your opponent just nukes her then she's just gone yeah um so for 80 points you don't get that until you get down dial there's no way to push her so if your opponent just ignores her then at best she's a 12 for four on her own with her signature she can modify damage so she can be a 12 for what a 12 for five which isn't yeah. nothing but it's also not amazing for 80 points when there's no like pen damage no precision strike no there's just nothing other than um the one thing that I, the one reason I've played her at 40 points more than any other WWE character, I've put her on so many teams at 40 points, is because her trait, no one is ready for Asuka. When she KOs an opposing character, choose a combat value that she has not chosen for this ability this game, modify it plus one for the rest of the game. If she has already chosen four combat values, heal her two clicks. In. So that combined with what her last click is makes Asuka for 40 points almost more valuable to me than Dark Phoenix for 30. Because Asuka here, you can do, I KO one character, I either use lightning speed or charge or whatever, and I KO like a bystander or like a cheap little, like whatever kind of piece. Uh, I set up a like scenario where I can KO it right away. And I instantly put that first plus one into... Now, uh, she's an 18, I mean... Hopefully I've got like a defend, so she's like a 19, and then I've got a plus one defense, so she's a 20 with super senses. But potentially she's just an 18 uh, on her own. On click eight, she has combat reflexes plus a blue click, so she's naturally only a 20 because you can't outwit on a blue click. You can't range attack on a... So she's just a 20 because all you can do is close attack. If I already have that plus one from earlier, then she's a 21, and so, like, your only hope of taking her out is either Pulse Wave or, like, Poison or something like that. Uh, but, yeah, like, she she only gets better from there. If I can KO multiple characters, multiple things, I can get her up to a 4 damage on click 8 by herself. I can get her up to an 11 attack by herself. Um, I'm almost never going to care about healing her, too, because, to be honest, that last click is the best click on her dial. Um, but, yeah, it's just... 
I'm not going to say Asuka's the very best because she suits a very specific role, but man, it's a super All solid right. 40 point. It's so solid. Now that we've uh, talked about Asuka for five I love, minutes, I we, love can, we can move on. Uh, he doesn't know who <laughs> I says, am, but someday. What is, what is I, I know several fans that are like that, but unironically, Simeon. Uh, yikes. Anyways, um, which is uh, your favorite or best WWE map? I'll go. My favorite is the training center, just because it's like a weight room. It's kind of funny. It's yeah. a very simple map. It's sort of totally got some walls in there. It's, it's pretty fun to play on. And then probably the best is just WWE Arena indoor for like the team you want to play on. But it's well, the one that sees the most play, I for sure. It's just this. It's indoors, sure, but it's completely open. It's got hindering and it's got obscuring, which is just hindering now. So it's just this huge wide open map with nothing but like hindering terrain on it. So... Yeah, yeah, but it's indoor. Mine, which is one thing, so you can you know barrier or whatever. Yeah, uh, the, it's a great. I mean, in the era of 2019, it was a great map against almost everything because WWE needs zero elevated. So if you manage to win Very map, true. you want to put them on. I mean, none of the WWE maps had elevated that I. But you didn't want to like put a ton of walls or anything in their way. It's all close combat. You want to close the gap and attack your opponent. And you didn't really care if it like if your opponent had a range heavy. Team. It really did not matter if they could outrange you because hopefully most of your team was on like either a blue, like either a blue click or click wall. Um, but yeah, I, the WWE arena where they had a specific spot where like the uh, WWE ring was kind of like where it was supposed to is awesome. And then the training center was my go-to if I wanted like more closed off kind of stuff. But I almost always went with the WWE. It's just very thematic, really cool. It's kind of weird because your opponent like enters from the crowd and you enter from like the, the actual like uh, entry ramp. So it's weird, but... It's fine. Yeah, that's true. Uh, all right, and that is all for Ben Jones' questions. So cap us off on Discord. Uh, El Presidente here gives us, if you can make three two-by-two two Transformers, who would you make? Uh, mm. I got to go with, you know, there's some stereotypical answers that you could do, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to think of uh, some slightly... Ever so slightly, not my GIF, but some other uh, slightly unique ones. Ones that are like real, <laughs> real Transformers. I found um, those Roblox. That doesn't count as Transformers. Right. Uh, so they made, uh, these aren't really Transformers, but they did crossover Transformers action figures. Oh, yeah, With yeah. Hasbro, and they have a Wolverine, Captain America, like Hulk Transformers that are really I have, cool. I have that a go Wolverine into, like, Transformer. Oh, you do? I own. Dude, yeah, I really I own need a that Captain that America turns one. Into a wolf. Oh, he turns into a wolf. See, like I think Hulk and Cap, like Hulk turns into a tank, and Cap turns into like a jeep or something. And then, oh, this might just uh, be a different set of. That might be a different thing. I don't know. Um, and then there's the Star Wars ones, where, like Darth Vader turns into his Tie Fighter and stuff like that. So, but if we're saying hero clicks, well, I mean, yeah, I want a giant mech Captain America, so I'm still going to use that as like one of mine for Transformers. Uh, but if we're going to make it hero clicks. You know, I could try to be cool and say other ones, but I think we need to have like Optimus Prime and Megatron. Like if we ever if we only get three, you know, two of them have to be like Optimus Prime and Megatron in my if we're getting Transformers, then yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know? I feel like it would have if we ever got a hero click set, it would have to be like a full booster set um, where it like, the shifting be... focus was common, uncommon, <sighs> rare. And you had, yeah. you know, you actually had like, um, and you could have like all the Witwickies as like human bystanders that that the robots themselves could pop out, or they could just be really cheap figures in the set. You know, you could do, you, but I feel like if you were doing a booster set, it would have, it would hundred percent have to be like Pacific Rim style. You know, yeah, it would because you couldn't make them all two by twos. You know, if if, if we were building be, a set yeah, like it would be that, really hard to collect twos, everything. It'd yeah, be, ended up being yeah. I don't know because right, yeah, so uh, clearly um, WizKids cannot do figures uh, like legally. They can't do figure like, pose transfer. You would have to have yeah, like just like Beast Boy. You would have to have like the pterodactyl, T Rex, Cheetah, whatever. And then like um, my Transformers would like so the trans. I did not grow up with like the '80s Transformers, the original. Like I grew up with none of that. 
the original series that I saw was Beast Wars, which is kind that of... That explains so much about you. I don't... That from what I, so much. From what I can tell of, like, the Transformers fandom, Beast Wars is kind of like the black sheep of the family, and a lot of people do not like it. Or it's like... To be fair, the animation was like CG weird kind of animation. It was like very strange, but it was like early CGI. It was not like modern day. I can make stuff look really neat and really realistic. Um, But that being said, yeah, like Megatron from Beast Wars, literally a T-Rex that turns into like one of the most imposing villains of all time and like in my opinion he was just like a very ruthless for no reason other than like he was just like oh like we're the war is pretty much over we should just still kill this other faction of like cybertron characters uh you know, it's like the maximals versus the predacons the b wars thing but it was like they're all the same race they're from the same planet and he was like Oh, we crash landed on this planet. We'll just still kill him because I don't like them. And there was like no hope of getting back. He was just like spiteful at that point. Um, and then Optimus Prime, out. Oh, excuse me, Optimus Primal because he was uh, an ape. He was a monkey. Uh, Optimus Primal at one point in the series combines his spark with the original Optimus Prime spark and becomes like this giant mechazoid creature that's like half monkey but mostly it's like um instead of mecha godzilla it's like mecha king Kong. and uh, that's essentially what he becomes and he's just like super overpowered for a few episodes of the series interesting and then, uh, yeah actually like one of like my favorite toys growing up it wasn't mine i never it was like 70 dollars, so it was a friend of mine owned it but it was super cool because it turned into a tank and like this weird super mecha dude with like all these each finger moved you know how much i like uh what do they call that the points like the the points oh, articulation moved. yeah the articulation, articulation. points yeah. he had an extreme guy. amount of articulation when at this point in life i was used to like 5 it was like leg mm. moves up arm moves up head turns side to side that was my five articulation um this guy like each individual figure moved or each individual finger uh when he was in like the tank mode his like tank turret could like rotate and stuff it was really solid really cool um and then from the rest of the series they did like this really weird thing midway through where they went back to cybertron and the cgi got like really weird and really realistic so instead of being robots mm. in disguise as animals, they were like fleshy animals that could turn into robots. Very strange. The last season of Beast Wars is extremely disturbing to me, but also very interesting because I don't know, like it's like Optimus is like almost pained when he's like, I am transformed. And then he like his body tears its part a cell like uh, tears jeez apart. I don't I don't like that sort of weird Cronenberg thing and he's like oh god I can't take it and then he turns into okay. like robot okay. version. I don't know. What about this? Uh, also he loses all like the laser blaster. I don't know. Weird. Basically Beast Wars is my answer. I don't like it. Cheetor. Another Rat another good trap, 10, 10 15 minute answer for Beast um, Wars. I can't remember the Velociraptor. 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 Uh, Velociraptor. He was like Metator because he always. Was All like, right. I want. All some right. Meat. There's also a snow leopard. That guy was really cool. He was like the white Power Ranger. He showed up for one episode. Was he? And he was like, I'm too. Was cool a guy for named your Snow team. Leopard really cool? Sure. Yeah. Maybe yeah. he was. All right. Uh, <laughs> that is it for our <laughs> Patreon <laughs> questions. We're gonna jump over to Facebook. We're gonna do our Malcolm Raj questions here really quick. Uh, as you know, Malcolm lives in Tokyo. Uh, Olympics and all that jazz started. Blah 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 blah. He's got some Olympic questions, so these aren't really clicks related, so we'll rattle through these really quick. Uh, which Olympic sports do you enjoy watching on TV? Uh, summer or winter? I personally, I don't I don't care. Like, whether the Olympics are going on or not going on, my life does not change at all. Uh, I don't have cable, so, like, there's zero reason for me to watch it. Uh, so I'll just, like, shout out, like, my dad's favorite sport, 
for the Olympics, and that is curling. And it's like yes. that's always kind of kind of fun to watch. Curling is kind of cool. So like I I dig I do dig it and enjoy watching curling, especially uh, the men's curling team that does look like a bunch of people that would indeed yeah play curling. Uh, it cur- look, yeah. legitimately so. looks like the guys that would be part of like the darts get at your bar and they were just like happen to be they because they're not like super physically fit they're just you don't have to be in excellent shape to good at curve yeah yeah that's true bully. skill skill based all right are you, um, are you curling too are you just gonna no jump my, on curling? So curling's my awesome two, though. okay uh, that i typically watch i really like the winter biathlon that's the one where they have to like ski around the little track and then they take a pot shot at like their target and I can't remember oh, yes. what the rules are exactly, but it's like if you miss, you gotta do like another lap. And it just mm. seems like such a high school thing where like your coach would be like, "You missed, take a lap." But uh, I really like the biathlon. It's just really fun combining shooting, which is like America's and favorite pastime, shooting, correct. and also like some sort of like race combined with that is pretty interesting. And then uh, weightlifting. Uh, when it comes to feats that I would never be able to perform. I like my brain doesn't quite understand people that are really fast. Like I'm like, yes, that's fast. But part of my brain's like, I am also fast. I could, I could be, uh, but what my brain really does understand is mass amounts of, work. so watching sure. like Eddie Hall, uh, what was a hang clean? Like that thousand pounds. Yeah, that's true. It's like, my brain is like, ah, uh, or I don't even think it was a thousand. I think it was like, even then, I feel like, like, no offense to the Olympics, but like Olympic lifts are not as fun to watch. They, they still do deadlifts and like whatever, but like, not strong as fun as strongman. Strongman is way more fun to watch. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just fact. For sure. Yeah. And that's, uh, because Olympic lifts are like very structured. This isn't like a real yeah. thing that you would I do. I want to know I want to know how many motorcycles a man can lift. That's <laughs> right. that's what I want to measure it in. What the hell is a kilogram? Can man you know? pick big stone up and put it on table? Don't disrespect the Atlas stones like that, Simeon <laughs> Bruce. That's a fun one to watch. <laughs> it's it's super fun, but it's so it's but like yes, so it is, weirdly it is old big time. Rock. It's like or like the keg toss, where it's like, yeah, yeah he's gonna toss the keg, the keg toss. Or... I understand because if I get mad in a bar and I like get behind the counter and pick up a keg, I want to know how far I can. Th- but at no point am I like, oh, I just found this really heavy rock and I want to like show it off to my friend, so I'm gonna carry it over to his table and set it down on his table. Like, right? Those don't I don't understand yeah, those? Uh, uh, but, yeah, okay. for sure, dude. All right. Um, next up is which Olympic sport do you hate to watch? Uh, I honestly, you know, like I said, I don't like watching the Olympics anyways. So besides all of them, specifically like normal sports, and by that I mean like baseball, basketball, volleyball. I don't know if we play soccer, but like soccer, like like yeah. these are just normal, normal sports that are also just now at the Olympics. Not interesting to me, I guess. Right. Uh, yeah, like I, don't, I think, yeah, I think uh, normal. Sp- yeah, I agree. Uh, like soccer, baseball. Uh, I don't even think like well, even conti- I don't even think it's considered in the running unless yeah you spell it with and then it's yeah football. it's not a, yeah um, normal football is not a global global sport no. so it's, yeah it's not uh, but if those were going to be like a worldwide event I would prefer it be like the World Cup where you yeah. have a basketball World Cup you have a soccer World Cup a baseball cup like all those kind of things like because it's just it's only interesting to me when that is like the entire event if you give me the option of like watching olympic baseball versus olympic like card flicking i'll watch the card flick because i'm like oh yeah some of these people are going to be really talented where i've seen wacky sports like that yeah yeah, here in america we watch extremely talented baseball players uh soccer players football players you know like all those things we watch them constant the olympics are like the the one time that like the track and field, like the weirdo sport kind of people get to like shine. The weirdo like, they don't sports. normally. Yeah. yeah. The Ocho. Yeah. ES, ESPN right, Ocho it's people. Truly it shine. is though. Yeah. Because yeah. Like, Cause like any other like day of the year, do you think I care about like fencing? No. Yeah. I mean, we've, yeah, we've got like the lumberjack there. games, but like, yeah, Alaska and I don't know, Michigan, like those Northern States are never like, like North Dakota's. Yeah. Never, like, 
hey, let's get a league together and we'll do some winter biathlon. We'll all yeah. shoot and skate around and then shoot again. No, it's, it's kind of neat. Yeah. But no. Um, all right. Uh, number three, if you could go to the Olympics, which sport would you watch live? Uh, honestly, I, I don't I don't like watching sports. I also don't I, I don't go to a lot of sporting events. I don't enjoy just sitting in the bleachers watching sports that's not for me i'm not not a sports fan the only sport i enjoy watching is hockey so i guess hockey for yeah. um winter Maybe olympics that would be me yeah dude that would be it that would purely be it that'd be the only one i would want to watch just because i'm like oh yeah this is the best of the best no scoring is going to happen here we're going to go uh Extended, extended, extended. Maybe one goal. See what happens. You know, like that's how pros play hockey. Uh, anyways, what's uh, what's one sport you'd want to watch? Assuming I'm a bystander that has like no interest or no, like no stake in the nobody part of like my friend. Group. Like I'm not rooting for any particular person. Um, that would rule out all track and field. I find track and field yeah. extremely boring unless I am running in it. It's like I can I can watch people running around a track like ah. Legs move. That's how that happened. Uh, it's super boring for me unless I'm actually even like when I was in like high school track and I'd watch other events. Extremely bored. At no point am I like watching their technique. My brain just goes like, "Yep, oh, those yeah. are people You're moving. Like, who cares? Those people seem to be moving from this very far away distance." Uh, but again, yeah, if I could watch the like the weightlifting, especially like the last rounds of weightlifting when they're like determining. Uh, winners uh, when people are pushing their bodies like be normal yeah. capabilities like what they for and stuff to get that kind of that's really interesting to me things that take a lot of effort uh, and a lot of skill I find interesting but also I have to understand them so I can never really like enjoy or watch gymnastics and be like fully invested because I have zero which which idea. one do you want to watch Simeon which one do you want to watch uh weightlifting yeah because there we go. Perfect. Thank you for your answer. Next question. <laughs> Goodness gracious. This is why I hate track and field and gymnastics. Okay. It's All true. Right, I don't understand Goodness. why they score. Like, she did more Goodness flips. Gracious. Why she get less score? I don't understand. Oh, dude, I get that too. I was watching the men's. It was like they were just like on a bar and they were just flipping around and yeah. listening to the commentary. I'm like, yeah, dude, he's flipping around. He looks like, so cool. They're like, oh, they're going to take off points for that. And I'm like, what'd he do? He flipped like the last guy flipped right. around. You're like, around the bar. Yeah, I get is it. Is the goal to flip you know? faster than the last flip person? Flip faster with the technique or is it switching like, hands. Yeah, what is it? I'm honestly, I'm impressed that they can mount one way and then dismount the other way. The amount of times they switch directions, go around and around that bar and not like and stick the landing. I am, I'm a little impressed. That is actually a little impressive. But uh, yeah, we were watching the American guy. And then he was, they were just like, ah, oh, dude, he really messed up. That's really going to kill a score. And I'm like, what'd he do? What did he do wrong? Like, he sort of stumbled a little bit on the landing, but they, they were like talking about other things he did during his routine. And I'm like, bro, he looked amazing. What are you talking about? It's, yeah, it's weird. Anyways, uh, who are your favorite athletes from Olympic, uh, past or present? Um, obviously, big shout out to Kurt Angle winning Olympic gold. With a broken freaking neck, um, and I don't really care about any Olympic athlete, but Twice. because he is, two he is a gold self. Medals. That is true. True. I put some respect on his on his name. Uh, two Olympic gold. Um, but because this dude is a South Dakota native, graduate of University of South Dakota, just won Olympic silver this year in pole vault. Uh, Chris Nielsen, I think, is his name. Uh, congratulations to him. Big, you know, big up South Dakota silver medal. Love to see it. So that like that's awesome. But yeah, any uh. <laughs> Any any favorite athletes for you, Simi? I didn't even watch this guy pull vault, um, I guess, but I, hey, he got silver. So that's yeah, cool. like other than Kurt Angle, I, I'd have to go like Steve O. Uh, always really put his body on the line. Um, <laughs> really impressive <laughs> style. Um, okay. okay. Always got Jimmy. a ten. I I know the judges don't don't always rate him out of a ten, but I always did. <laughs> okay, uh, Simi. No, like all I right. I am not at all qualified to rate an Olympic athlete. And yeah. as far as like favorites go. The only ones that I really know are the ones that did well. Like, clearly, like I, I don't want to say like Serena or Venus Williams for tennis. Is tennis an Olympic sport? Because it shouldn't be if it. Yeah, I don't way. know. They have Wimbledon. Kinda they don't not. need the Olympics. But um, I know like Michael Phelps. You know like Simone Biles. Like all the all the Olympians that I know. Yeah. And at them. the same time, I'm like, do not right. care. Michael Phelps good at swimming. Great. That's great. Go go save yeah. people on a beach. Become a lifeguard, yeah. Michael Phelps. Go for it, Aquaman. Um, yeah. 
but at the same time, I, I do not care that you are good at swimming. That does not make any difference. I've never once rooted for swimming. I live in Nebraska. I don't know if you're aware, but this is a super duper landlocked state. Uh, we qualify for diplomatic ocean immune Nebraska because we have never once seen, smelled, or even come close to touching the ocean. So swimming, I do not care for. Michael Phelps, I am sorry. I'm glad you're an Olympian, but I, I do not care about you. I don't even understand it. What is water? I own a bath. That's all. End of discussion. Yeah. There you go. Good good job, Simeon. Thank you. Uh, all right. So that is uh, that is it for Malcolm's questions. I did, however, uh, remember that we have one more question uh, from listening to the show. Uh, Matt Reed, he sent us this question uh, a little while ago, earlier today. So he says, kind of a joke question here. What is the best body part to work before a hero clicks turn work out before a hero clicks tournament? So, this is, you know, it's a fun, stupid little question for the podcast. Oh, uh, so I never work out on a hero clicks playing day because there's just almost normally there's not a lot of time it's normally on like a saturday for a big 300 modern my gym doesn't open until eight on saturday and then i need to be normally in like sioux falls at like 10 for registration so that means i have to leave at nine so it's like a really tight area there to get a workout in if i had to, to go for it i would say uh chest and triceps gets the best pump for, uh, yeah, for a confidence yeah, yeah. boost, right? Confidence boost for, for hero clicks, I would say. So I was going to yeah, save this for a, a video that I'm eventually going to make. It's got to be forearms. So you need you need really like veiny no, forearms. Under, understandable. Understandable. So if you have to, if your opponent damages your figure, what you do is you pick it up with both forearms as flexed as possible. So they're just like, why are there forearms? Veins pop. And then you click it as like confidently as possible because nothing is more demeaning than somebody who tries to click their hero clicks figure and is like oh the base just won't click no 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 that cannot be you to maintain full control of the map the mm -hmm. match yes. you need your opponent to think there is no weakness and so you cannot have the weakness of your hero click your tiny plastic figure stopping you in the dial no you have to crank that just like Ugh! like opening a jar of peanut butter. I do at least twelve how, peanut butter how, jar opening. How hard do you think it is reps. to open peanut butter jar? It's a plastic lid. You mean well, pickles? Peanut butter pickles, whatever. I don't. I don't know. Well, whatever. I mean, just, I don't think. I don't think uh, historically. I don't think there's been a historical trend of peanut butter jars being difficult to open, Simeon. Well, I think, you I think start pickles, somewhere, Calder. I'm sorry. I, I think, I'm sorry. My well, reps are at a less weight. Well, no, I'm what peanut butter <laughs> jars <laughs> too easy okay. for you. All right, sorry. Somebody whatever. hit the All genetic right. lottery Pardon. and they're just Pardon. able to okay. open peanut butter jars. Jeez. All right. All right. Forearm dominance for Simeon. Chest and triceps uh, for Calder. Awesome. I like the forearm dominance, though. Another Dial H t-shirt we got to put on there is just you with, like, Popeye forearms. Do, do not let figure. your opponent see weakness, and it's just you yeah. cranking a cranking the dial, dial uh, like, so hard that it snaps. Like, off, yeah. All right. Uh, that is, that is going to be our show this week, guys. I uh, really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said in the other episode, make sure you check us out on Facebook, Dial H for Hero Clicks. Stay updated for when we post new shows and everything like that and memes and share articles on our Facebook and Twitter. And then if you want to send us questions, you can do so by joining our Patreon, doing so on Discord, or just messaging our Facebook and Twitter. Or you can also write us an email. We are Dial H for Hero Clicks at gmail.com. Dial H for Hero Clicks all spelt out. Uh, so yeah, that is all I have to say. One last thing. I think we were... Did we mention the Dice Addiction Tank Open that was happening today? Oh, yes. That is right. So we Dice do have, Addiction Tank Open. We have yeah, results. we do today. have a, a result. Uh, Caleb okay, Reddick right. won the Dice Addiction Tank Open, uh, and Michael Love got second. So uh, Caleb was playing Animals. I'm guessing Maggot was probably a part of that. Just Maggot going may or may of, not have been a part of that. Yeah, just going off of like a previous things, uh, maybe a Wendigo or two. And then Michael Love was playing Triple Wingard and Spider Pharaoh, probably a ruler uh, or spider hey, family, I'm glad, technically. I'm, I'm glad that did better for him in this tournament than it did uh, during the Click Scout. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, is that yeah. Ex the exact same thing that he ran? That is the exact same team. Triple Jason with Spider Pharaoh. I, maybe, I don't know, maybe he switched up his sideline a little bit. Um, I imagine, you know, commissioners on that bad boy. So like, I don't know. Oh yeah. 
what else you but yeah like what i that's awesome what i'm I love glad about, it worked out uh, better the multiple jason team uh God, so although it seems like there's not like a ton of offensive capability you can each jason can use the same sideline so if you have one commissioner on the sideline each one can generate rookie bystander from the single commissioner so that's yeah, that's one thing that I've always thought was really cool about the Moonguard builds. I've never seen a triple one, but it makes sense. If you're using yeah, it with I mean, Spider Pharaoh, you've got access to Barrier, you've got a pretty solid taxi, plus I think Spider Pharaoh has like uh, Perplex, Prob, and if you If you messed up a little bit, not gonna lie, Spider Pharaoh hits hard. She's in 11 oh, yeah. attack, precision strike, 4 damage, top yeah. dial. You know, like... She punches way harder than she should. It's crazy. Um, For like 65 points or something, yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. And you know, she's got, what, enhancement leadership prop control all on her special damage power top dial? Yeah, she's awesome. She's really great. Um, oh, but yeah, no, good job, to, uh, good job to Caleb Reddick for cementing that W. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, we weren't able right. to make it to the tank open this week, but you know, I'm glad everybody showed up, did well. I'm just assuming the animal theme team was probably something along the lines multiple maggot chip chip or something yeah, yeah chip uh maybe wendigo definitely the high evolutionary oh uh, for sure probably most like gorilla grod yeah yeah grod i mean that seems to be there's just grod. a ton of really cheap oh yeah makes sense oh yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe maybe a little bit of Spider Hammer Eye action. I think that was on Tyler oh, yeah. Spees' build was Spider Hammer Eye. So maybe a little bit of Spider Hammer Eye action. I still don't you see know, why like Spider that. Hammer Eye's great, but yeah, I mean, uh, some, I guess some as free far attacks, as like something that's you know, hard to attack helps yeah. you with that that alpha. Sure, but yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's what I see. But with that, but yeah, no, congratulations. If, if you're looking to pick up some competitive figures like the maggot, the spider pharaoh uh maybe even jason wingard uh spider hammer eye uh wendigo or five ten uh you should check Ooh. out coolstuffinc.com where you can find a lot of these figures although at this point hard to say those tend to go pretty quick once the potential is realized uh but you can they, check we them got out. jason wingard for do, 75 do sorry keep going. Uh, yeah. we got jason wingard for 75 pretty good pretty normal i'd say average price for jason and uh, if you want to pre-order some of those WizKids games that we mentioned in uh, our Thread Dead Redemption, uh, Grease Lightning, the Weird Princess Escaped Crazy, um, those were totally why we why we did Thread Dead Redemption. Yes. You can check those out at GhoulStuffInc.com as well. They have more than just hero clicks, but uh, they definitely have coolest singles and sealed product. So go ahead and check them out at GhoulStuffInc.com. Sadly, uh, Kibble Scuffle is out of stock. And with that, like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how they, six uh, people humor? think I am fun. It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Jimmy because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow.